The endocrine system is composed of ductless glands that secrete hormones, chemical messengers that control homeostasis. The hypothalamus controls the secretions of the pituitary. Nerve cells in the hypothalamus send releasing hormones to anterior pituitary to release hormones. Hormones are growth hormone, TSH, ACTH, MSH, FSH, LH, and prolactin. Hormones produced by the hypothalamus are stored in the posterior lobe of the pituitary. Hormones are ADH, increases the reabsorption of water, and oxytocin, contracts the pregnant uterus. Pituitary gland is called the master gland because it controls the function of other endocrine glands. T3 and T4 regulates metabolism of nutrients for normal growth and matures the nervous system. Calcitonin lowers blood calcium and phosphates. Parathormone raises the blood calcium to normal levels. Medulla secretes adrenaline and norepinephrine that prepare the body for stressful situations. Cortex secretes aldosterone, regulates sodium reabsorption and potassium excretion in the kidney. Cortisol reduces inflammation. Androgens stimulate male sex characteristics. Testes produce testosterone. Ovaries produce estrogen and progesterone hormones necessary for development of reproductive systems and secondary sex characteristics. Thymosin is necessary for the development of T lymphocytes. Melatonin regulates the body wake and sleep cycles and inhibits the function of the reproductive system. Serotonin acts as a neurotransmitter and vasoconstrictor. Islets of Langerhans produce insulin and glucagon that regulate the blood glucose level essential for energy. The endocrine system. The endocrine system does a lot of important jobs and gets none of the glory. Think about it. There's a bumper sticker that says, I heart my mom. But are there ever any that say, I thyroid gland my mom? <laughs> the respiratory system inspired the phrase, you take my breath away. But does anyone ever say, you regulate my growth? No. The endocrine system is an unsung hero that regulates reproduction, growth, immunity, and all other processes occurring in the body. Basically, it maintains a stable environment for the body called homeostasis. This environment helps all the other organs of all the other systems to function properly. But all you have to know is that without the endocrine system, there'd be no life. Still, the endocrine system never gets the credit it's due. But today, it will. <laughs> Section A, Organs of the Endocrine System. The super exciting organs of the endocrine system are small and dispersed throughout the body, and they're all responsible for producing chemicals called hormones. Hormones are sort of like chemical messengers. They are secreted into and carried by the bloodstream. Then the hormones travel to individual target cells that they act on. In other words, they bind to specific receptors on target cells to alter the cell's activity. The major endocrine organs are the pituitary gland, the thyroid gland, the parathyroid gland, the adrenal gland, the pancreas, the gonads, the pineal gland, and the thymus. People sometimes call the pituitary gland the master gland because hormones released by it direct the activity of almost all other endocrine organs. The pituitary gland is located below the hypothalamus. It's connected to the hypothalamus by the infundibulum, which is a funnel-shaped stalk structure. If you're confused about what the hypothalamus is, it's part of the diencephalon of the brain, and it's discussed in the Anatomically Correct World of Anatomy, Part 1. In the section on the brain, all you really have to remember is that the hypothalamus produces hormones. The pituitary gland can be divided into two regions, the posterior and anterior lobes. The posterior lobe is made up of nerve fibers and acts as a storage area for two hormones produced by the hypothalamus. One of these hormones is oxytocin, which initiates uterine contractions during parturition, or labor, as most people know it. Another hormone is the antidiuretic hormone, or ADH. The main function of ADH is to stimulate the reabsorption of water from the collecting tubules. ADH is also known as vasopressin. The anterior lobe of the pituitary gland is made up of a glandular tissue that manufactures a whole heap of hormones called tropic hormones, 
They are, now brace yourself, because this is a mouthful. The cells that produce the tropic hormones are the somatotrophs, the thyrotrophs, the corticotrophs, the lactotrophs, and the gonadotrophs. The somatotrophs include the growth hormone, or GH. The thyrotrophs include the thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH. The corticotrophs include the adrenocorticotrophic hormone, or ACTH. The gonadotrophs include the follicle stimulating hormone, or FSH, and the luteinizing hormone, or LH. And finally, the lactotrophs include prolactin. Now, you want to hear the details? Do we have a choice? Well, to cut you a break, we'll only give you the details on one of those hormones, GH, the growth hormone. The rest you can learn about in physiology. GH stimulates normal growth in bone and muscles. If the anterior lobe secretes too much or too little of this hormone, it can cause some pretty serious problems. For example, if too little GH is present during childhood, dwarfism can occur. If there's too much GH in children, gigantism occurs. Too much GH in adults, as in the case of our 16th president, Abe Lincoln, causes acromegaly. This causes abnormally large hands, feet, and facial features, which worked for Lincoln, but doesn't work for everybody. We'll talk about the thyroid gland next. The thyroid gland is a butterfly-shaped organ located in the neck, anterior to, or in front of, the trachea. Basically, the thyroid hormones increase metabolic rate, or oxygen consumption, in most cells of the body, and calcitonin regulates calcium. The next major endocrine organ is the parathyroid gland. The parathyroid glands are tiny glands embedded in the back of the thyroid gland. They secrete parathyroid hormone, or PTH, which is important in calcium and phosphate regulation. The adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are triangular-shaped glands located on the top of each kidney. Each adrenal gland is actually made up of two endocrine glands, the outer adrenal cortex and the inner adrenal medulla. The outer adrenal cortex secretes three groups of hormones known as glucocorticoids, mineralocorticoids, and androgens. You don't have to know about these hormones in detail until you study physiology. The inner adrenal medulla is made up of nervous tissue. It secretes the catecholamines, which are made up of hormones epinephrine and norepinephrine. Ladies and gentlemen, the pancreas. The pancreas, which we discussed with the digestive system, is a yellowish tadpole-shaped gland located near the duodenum of the small intestine. Aside from aiding in digestion, the pancreas produces the hormones insulin, glucagon, and somatostatin. These hormones are responsible for the regulation of glucose in the body. The gonads! Both males and females have gonads. In females, the gonads are called the ovaries. In males, the gonads are called the testes. We'll breeze over the gonads now, but we'll cover them in more detail when we talk about the reproductive system. Basically, the gonads produce sex hormones that regulate reproductive functions. In females, these sex hormones are estrogen and progesterone. In males, the hormones produced by the testes are called androgens. The most popular and important male androgen is testosterone. We'll go into more detail on these sex hormones when we talk about the reproductive system. The pineal gland. The pineal gland, though it may sound dirty, is really just a pea-sized gland located in the brain. Pineal gland produces melatonin, a hormone many scientists think is responsible for diurnal or sleep-wake cycles. This is because melatonin production is at its peak level in the middle of the night and at its lowest level in the middle of the day. Because of this, experts infer that light levels affect melatonin. The thymus gland. The thymus gland is located posterior to or behind the sternum. The thymus gland regresses with age, which basically means it's larger and more noticeable in infants than in adults. The thymus gland produces the two major hormones, thymosin and thymopoietin. These hormones help T lymphocytes mature and become immunocompetent, or ready to do their job within the immune system. In case you don't remember, T lymphocytes are involved in your immune system. Other important endocrine structures. There are also a bunch of organs that belong to other systems, but also pull some weight in the endocrine system. These organs are the heart, the kidneys, and the gastrointestinal tract. The heart produces the hormone atrial natriuretic peptide, which decreases blood pressure. The kidneys produce erythropoietin, 
a hormone that increases red blood cell production. The gastrointestinal tract produces a whole bunch of digestive hormones like gastrin and cholecystokinin. These hormones regulate digestion. And finally, the skin produces a chemical called cholecalciferol. Cholecalciferol is a precursor to vitamin D3. Active vitamin D3 helps the body absorb calcium. Well, that's it for the endocrine system. Diabetes mellitus is a complex disorder of metabolism. It is a disease in which the body does not produce or properly use insulin. Insulin is a hormone that is needed to convert sugar, starches, and other food into energy needed for daily life. There are two types of diabetes that affect the elderly. Type 1 diabetes, also known as insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus, IDDM, or juvenile onset diabetes, results from the body's failure to produce insulin. An individual with type 1 diabetes needs to take daily insulin injections for the rest of their lives. It is estimated that 850,000 to 1.5 million Americans have type 1 diabetes. Non-insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus, or adult-onset diabetes, results from insulin resistance combined with relative insulin deficiency. Approximately 16 million Americans have type 2 diabetes. Someone with type 2 diabetes might make healthy or even high levels of insulin, but obesity makes the body resistant to its effect. Exercising 30 minutes a day and maintaining proper body weight for age and body type can help prevent type 2 diabetes. Prediabetes occurs when a person's blood glucose levels are higher than normal, but not high enough for a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. Without lifestyle changes, most people who have prediabetes will progress to type 2 diabetes within 10 years. The diagnosis of DM can shorten the average lifespan by up to 15 years. By 2025, over 20 million Americans are expected to have diabetes.